What's up everyone and welcome back to Nexus. There's probably no other country in the world as secretive about what goes on within its borders than North Korea, which has been under authoritarian communist rule since the 1950s. There is a wealth of dark facts and mysteries behind Kim Jong-un's dictatorship, some of which may be pretty hard to stomach and some which might surprise you a lot if you're used to thinking of the country as a comedic attempt at evil. Watch this video to find out the top 10 secrets you didn't know about North Korea. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get new content similar to this every day. And for this video, let's see if we can hit the golden like button, which is a thousand likes, so make sure to drop a like down below. Number 10. When you think of prison camps and human rights violations, your mind probably immediately springs to the Holocaust carried out in Nazi-occupied Europe in the Second World War. Actually, a myriad of countries have built prison camps as well like Japanese internment camps built by the US in Hawaii and California in the 40s, camps built in Kenya by the British Empire, and gulags in the Soviet Union. They have a grisly history. Though the North Korean government are far from saying these camps are all in the past, because they still have them today, including the most infamous one called Horyong, or number 22. These prisons are full of forced labor and human rights violations, and there are even stories from former guards who have defected that there were experiments carried out on inmates. Along with that, they also employ a three-generation punishment system, where people are born and raised and they die in the camps to make up for the crimes of their grandparents. Number 9. There's a famous photograph of Korea taken in orbit of the planet, where South Korea is brightly lit and bustling, and North Korea next door is a black void in between South Korea and China. This picture is, in fact, not a hoax image at all but a very real representation of the conditions in North Korea. That is, that they don't have electricity at night. The entire country is dark and off the grid. A spokesperson said that North Korea wasn't weakened by the lack of electricity though, and warned that other countries may soon face the same fate, saying of America that an old superpower that is meeting at sunset may put up a face of arrogance, but it can't avoid its dark fate. Number 8. Even in an allegedly communist country, it seems that nothing is free from the clutches of consumerism and the quest for profit, because even human waste is monetized in North Korea. Yeah, that's right, you can sell your poo for profit within their walls because of a gross shortage of legitimate fertilizer. Because they obviously need fertilizer to do things like grow crops, and so in this bid to help the country's dwindling agriculture industry so that they don't have to start relying on foreign imports to make their food. They can't rely on animal feces because there's not a very high amount of livestock to produce it. And it's kind of eco-conscious at least to recycle waste like this. It's not as weird as it sounds either, because other countries in Asia like China and Japan and a handful of African countries also do this. Number 7. Communist countries in history have generally only kept other communist countries as their key allies and trade partners. So when the Soviet Union was dissolved under Gorbachev in 1991, it had a knock-on economic effect on dozens of other countries, including North Korea. Though it was never part of the USSR, the famine and economic crisis in the mid to late 1990s cites the collapse of the Soviet bloc as one of its causes. The newly weakened North Korea then faced something called the Arduous March, from 1994 to 1998, which caused anywhere from 240,000 to 3.5 million deaths. Along with the famine, there were also a series of floods and droughts, all of this leading to the alleged stories of cannibalism. These stories had never been confirmed, but with all the other cover-ups, it's not too hard to imagine. Number 6. It might surprise you to know that just like most other countries, North Korea holds elections every five years for its leadership. Now you can claim the elections are rigged and people are frightened into voting continually for the same people, but the elections are still held regardless. All the seats are always won by the Democratic Front for the reunification of the fatherland. And apparently voter turnout is 100%, and support for the government is completely unanimous. The elections are greatly criticized as only being for show, and defectors claim that a separate ballot box is sometimes used for no votes or a different colored pen, meaning the officials watching can see this act of defiance, and it is generally deemed not worth the risk. On top of that, the neighborhood watch keeps track of people who don't show up like some sort of secret police. Number 5. Why does North Korea seem to hate America so much? You've probably asked one time or another. Well, there's a reason the Korean War of the 1950s is often called the Forgotten War, probably because you've forgotten about it or just never heard of it in general. 
The Korean War marked America's mission to end the spread of communism in Southeast Asia, a philosophy which led to the embarrassing 20-year-long campaign in Vietnam. In the Korean War, North Korea ended up completely leveled by US bombing, practically destroyed, so it's pretty remarkable that they've managed to reconstruct their entire country. The Korean War got so intense that General MacArthur, the general of the US Army at the time, suggested dropping a nuclear bomb, which led to him being relieved of duty by President Truman. Number 4 On both sides of North and South Korea's border, there's a large demilitarized zone, so that they can march their armies in there and invade on foot without it being considered an act of war before either army even made it to the border. This is one of the weirdest things I've ever heard. But in the North Korean zone, there's a village known as Peace Village. It can be seen from the border and is built to look like a great place to live. Except it's not real. This is why outside of North Korea, it has a nickname called Propaganda Village instead. And is a whole fake town. Like the type that gets built for nuclear bomb tests. It also has enormous loudspeakers to yell propaganda over the border at South Korea. And they even switch lights on and off at certain times to make it look like people live there. Number 3 after the previously mentioned Korean War, which is probably one of the only times in history masses of American people have been in the country, there were a total of six US soldiers who defected from America and the US Army and moved there. One such defector was called James Joseph Dresnok, and he actually only died last year. Dresnok claims to have gotten tired of his life in America, where he grew up in foster care and his wife left him during a tour of duty in West Germany. So he ran across a minefield in the middle of the day in 1962 and joined the North Koreans, settling there permanently after a failed escape attempt in 1966. He also allegedly gave up American secrets to the Koreans during the war, and beat up frequently his fellow defectors on the orders of the Korean soldiers in charge of the group. Number 2 Lots of countries have weird laws, but North Korea's list of 28 pre-approved hairstyles really takes the cake. Seriously, there's only 28 total ways you're allowed to style your hair. 18 if you're a woman, and 10 if you're a man. All of them are modest and uncomplicated, but there are more rules prohibiting what men can do, since they're not actually allowed to grow their hair longer than 2 inches. Unless they're older, then they can go to 3. Along with that, women aren't allowed curly hair unless they're single. If they're married, they have to go even more modest. Interestingly, Kim Jong-un's current haircut is not on the pre-approved list. Number 1 It might surprise you to hear that North Korea is the world's biggest committer of insurance fraud, with its state-owned and controlled insurance company, Korea National Insurance Corp., gathering hundreds of millions of dollars in global insurance scams. These scams, investigated by Washington during the Bush administration, involve making thousands of fake claims of transport accidents and flood damages from other countries. They are also supposedly involved in the trafficking of heroin to counterfeiting U.S. money. Whatever scams they're employing, it was enough to give Kim Jong-il 20 million for his birthday in 2009, a gift he was so grateful for he sent the people who gave it to him presents of fruits and blankets. Kind of seems like an unequal trade if you ask me. That was our list of the top 10 secrets you didn't know about North Korea. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit subscribe so you never miss a video in the future. And hit the like button too so we can hit the golden like of a thousand. Thanks for watching guys. Peace!